may I request Dr. Bipin Kumar Rai, the head ESH Security and Loss Prevention of Continental Tires, India, to kindly give the theme remarks. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, I will thank uh, Policy Times and the organizers, RLP and TRI, for giving me an opportunity to deliver this theme at trust and to interact with this community. Uh, see, this is a topic of uh, extended producer responsibility. And uh, basically, this is very simple subject. And we have to understand it in real intent and state what exactly is intended from this policy tool. Uh, see, the, the, the first part, which is very important is we have to ensure that how we can maximize the material and energy material and energy in functional uses means uh, we have to maximize the functional use of material energy in our economic sphere in our economic ecosystem how in the, the simple way if i say we should strive to keep the material in use forever and if we are able to do that, that is a great thing for our planet, for our future generations, and even for today for our own business. So this is the basic intent. And any manufacturer or anyone in the business, we have to think on this, how we can reduce the material intensity and energy intensity of our manufacturing processes in first place. And then we ensure that we are in a position to recover the energy and material from our product and try to replace the virgin material with this recovered material. So that is the basic intent. And as this say, this policy tool say extended producer responsibility, this means producer are responsible. Means these recyclers, they are actually supporting the producers to uh, execute their responsibility. So my only humble submission is that as a producer, we should not only look into the commercial aspect of EPR certificate and just be there in engaging in the commercial negotiation. Uh, we should look on this topic on the beyond that and as the overall sustainability transformation roadmap. When we look from the environmental perspective, from the perspective of the planet, and from the perspective of our own sustainability of our own business, uh, energy transition is one part. Responsible supply chain is another part. And there is also uh, emission-free or green operations when it comes to the manufacturing side. But circular economy is very critical because we cannot survive with the linear approach. And we have to bring the entire economic ecosystem into circularity mode okay now when we say this uh, how we are going to do that means it's very simple we have to ensure we have to keep our material in use forever but how we are going to do that how we can transform the sustainability and we can ensure that we uh, achieve all these targets whether it's limiting the global temperature by 2 degree, preferably by 1.5 degree at the end of the century, uh, ensuring sustainable material availability for our future generations. There are only three key words. One is the collaborations. We have to collaborate. And for this, environment and climate crisis is a shared problem, common problem. So we have to even collaborate with our competitors. It uh, sounds very odd but it is the need of an hour means because our supply chain issues are common our end of life disposal issues are common so it is better that we as a competitor we have to collaborate in ourselves and then the second part is the transparency because what we do transparency is must and that transparency will form the foundation stone of all the collaborations and this collaboration and with transparency, we have to uh, move towards innovations. And sustainability transformation is possible only 
until we believe on these three words, collaborations, transparency, and innovation. When I say collaborations, uh, means we have to build effective collaboration among the manufacturers, tire manufacturers, because it is our responsibility. It's not something where we have to play a passive role by just buying EPR certificates. No, not. The act, the government, the regulators, the policy makers have facilitated this. They, they are giving us a direction, but we have to go beyond that. We have to ensure that how this recycling industry becomes an environmental beneficial recovery of material energy. Environmental beneficial is very important. You know, today also we are doing recycling. It's an organized sector. Now we are getting transition into a organized sector in coming year. But yes, recycling is there. But the point is how we are doing recycling. Whether we are in a position to establish the controls, the amount of investment required to make it an environment beneficial recycling industry. So that's the important point where we need the collaborations. Uh, we have to look into the replacement of virgin material in our product with this recycled material. Reclaim rubber and recovered carbon seems promising, but yet it is not. There's a lot of uh, R&D yet need to go into it because it's not possible to replace 100%. But yes, we need to look into that direction. And when we work on this, we have to work as a manufacturer at our end, as well as to the uh, recyclers who actually are producing the secondary raw material. Third part is we need to build a ecosystem, a ecosystem which surrounds around the uh, management of end of life products, whether it is tire or other any other product for that matter. And when building this ecosystem, we need money. So as a manufacturers, we have to uh, ensure that we can collaborate to establish some funds to drive some R&D activity, or we can have some collaborations with the right people, right agencies like Try and other uh, experts in this area with the manufacturers, so that we can identify what are the issues, how we can build an ecosystem and we can prove an example to the world uh, that yes, in India, since we all know in our country, we are very, means that we have a huge population and we by ourselves are very close to nature. Our all practices, religious practices and all those things. And from the childhood we know, we recycle each and everything. This is in blood. So it is not new for the country, but yes, uh, we need to give it a proper shape in the economically viable. We have to ensure that this ecosystem becomes financially viable. And why not the customer, when we are doing the pricing of the product, the end of life disposal cost of the product should also be taken in the overall pricing of the product. So there should not be any shortage of funds. And we have, it's just a, uh, point of mindset because ultimately we cannot go into linear mode. We cannot survive. We can't have our business keep doing in linear mode. So when we have to move into circularity, the required funds, we need to have uh, to think about how we are going to arrange those fundings. And these are the areas where we need to have a greater effective collaboration among ourselves. So I foresee that yes, uh, with the ATMA, with recycler associations, with government agencies, yes, we will look across that we can have some sort of a steering committee or uh, where we can discuss this idea and drive these things to prepare an ecosystem where we can recycle our tires and we can take it as an example to the world to have an effective end of life management of tires. Uh, coming to the weight factors uh, which are given in the notifications, yes, we always, when the government published notifications, it was based on our past experience. Uh, there is a direction already given from the Central Pollution Control Board side that uh, reclaimed rubber gets the highest weightage as 1.30 and uh, recovered carbon, and there it's written that it can be used in tire manufacturing as 1.20. Yes, it's challenging. But there is a direction, and these two things are important uh, uh, when it 
when we look into the closed loop mode of the circular economy, uh, then coming to the uh, crumb modified bitumen rubber and crumb rubber. But when it comes to the pyrolysis also, uh, see the technology upgradation is going on in every area. And even uh, usually the, the previous experience uh, of pyrolysis, what we have seen is not so eco-friendly. Uh, and there were certain issues, but as uh, Satish Goel was telling uh, that the technology upgradation has happened, so we need to look on that aspect of also. And then there is another part where we need to uh, focus is uh, that capacity versus uh, liability. Means today as a tire manufacturers, we have uh, liability was 35%, then 70%, then 100% in subsequent financing years. And since the delay was there in getting the stations and all, so these liabilities actually are clubbing together and becoming in more one financial year, you have to do all these things. So, the and at the same time, what I understand is the capacity of the recycling as well as the uh, obligations of the tires producers, uh, it is neck to neck. So even if we the go, if in the EPR certificate generation, if we go by these weight factors, it is going to be a little bit, uh, I guess, uh, mismatch. And uh, this is a thing which ultimately there is a steering committee uh, and they can look across all these uh, topics. Once the recyclers get registered, uh, there is a clear picture what is the recycling capacity available and what is actually the liabilities. Uh, now, there are, uh, this is what one, and then these are the real life challenges uh, which we have discussed, but we have a lot of opportunities also. I mean, we have to look on the secondary raw material market. We need to develop a market for our secondary raw materials because everything is not going back into your product tires. So to enable this ecosystem become financially viable, we have to look how we can build a secondary raw material market. And the first thing when I speak about transparency, it is developing the standards, specifications, uh, so that we know, uh, even my recyclers should know where he has to target or what kind of product. So that's another part where we need to work and even Bureau of Indian Standard the government agency has to define the specifications for all these products and even for GST per se, we need to have all that SSIN code and all those things for this recovered, um, means the secondary raw materials. So that that is another part where we have to work. Uh, when I was saying that uh, collaborations among uh, tire manufacturers and recyclers, we also need to look how we can improvise our secondary raw materials quality. For example, today tire pyrolysis oil, what extra we can do to enrich that oil so that we can have a better pricing of that. Because ultimately you have to work in such a way that your recovered carbon means the material which we are recovering, they are of high quality, high value, so that this entire ecosystem becomes financially viable. And from the automotive, uh, from the producers, we also need to look into how we can set up a evaluation criteria to drive our uh, recyclers to be more uh, efficient recycling facilities in terms of zero emissions, zero discharges, because ultimate idea is to make this planet livable even when we were not here. So th this is what is uh, in my mind, what I want to share and discuss with you even uh, we, we, we have the technologies, I saw there are technologies which can even convert the recovered carbon, means the carbon from tires to graphite like materials, which are very, very, very uh, high value substance. So the possibilities are enormous. We need to look into these things and we should, as a producer, what I believe is we should not only look into managing EPR certificate and meeting the compliance requirement and the EPR notifications. Certainly not. Otherwise, we will not be able to achieve the real intent. 
today the agenda is uh, of this conference is very well structured and i have seen the uh, session where we are going to discuss on the epr process implementation issues uh, we have a session where uh, one uh, on the rcb recovered carbon black then we also have session on the equipment and technologies part of recycling uh, so, and we have all those experts here uh, so i think that today's session is going to be very fruitful we all will learn together from here and then the thought process will uh, let us drive this journey and more evolve this journey uh, path forward and we will be in a better shape and we can go from here with a clear thought process and with a vision how we can take up this journey further and achieve the real intent of maximizing the functional use of our material energy in the economic sphere. Thank you so much.